I brought up Ethereum uh, earlier. You said we can cover that as well. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of guys that are pro Ethereum and, you know, they swear by it. Now with NFT, you know, most of the purchases, 50% is being done by Ethereum. Ethereum's eventually going to get a better than Bitcoin or, you know, Ethereum's going to be right there next to Bitcoin. What are your thoughts on Ethereum? <laughs> So first of all, there, if you look at the crypto ecosystem, there's crypto property, there's cryptocurrencies, there's crypto platforms, and there's crypto securities, and there's even crypto art. Right? These are just asset classes. Mm -hmm. Maybe there'll be crypto commodities. NFT is crypto art. It's like art mm -hmm. cryptographically protected. Uh, Stablecoin is cryptocurrency, a dollar or a euro moving on crypto rail. It's currency because I can move it as a medium of exchange without paying a tax bill on it. Um, <clears throat> Ethereum's crypto platform, right? People are building other things on that platform, and, and that's the principal appeal, smart contracts and, and the fact that you can build something. Bitcoin is crypto property. It is a long-term store of value, and, um, and it is the dominant crypto property. And the way it establishes itself as crypto property is through Nakamoto consensus and proof of work. You, you have a decentralized mining network that is encrypting energy with the SHA-256 hash function in order to create it, this wall of encrypted energy and, and make it uh, resistant to denial of service attacks, other sorts of attacks. It needs to be robust and have integrity over, over time and space. And that's the, that's the technique that we've developed. Now, here's the big idea, an important idea. Most people don't understand securities law. Okay? Bitcoin's the only proven digital property that we have created in the world. We have, a, we have created a property and not a security. The definition of property is, um, is a, a common commodity that is beyond the control of any one individual or corporation. If something is deemed property, uh, in, in uh, a legal sense, it means it wouldn't be regulated by, as a security by the SEC. Um, gold is property. Soybeans are property. Wood, lumber, land is property. Bitcoin is property. Okay? Um, Did the SEC come out and officially state that, that it's not, uh, it's, not a security, it's, it's officially it's, a property? It's understood that, that Bitcoin is not regulated by the SEC. Bitcoin mm -hmm. is property. It's the only thing we all agree on in the crypto marketplace, <laughs> that Bitcoin is property. Um, securities are regulated by the SEC, and you can, you can create a security. Uh, MicroStrategy, MSTR, is a security Go read my 10K statement. It's 123 pages of disclosures that are legally required for that stock to trade, mm. that security to trade. It costs $20 million a year for us to maintain all the disclosures to be compliant with securities law. If you're a security, it's a different thing. Bitcoin is property. Ethereum, everything else in the crypto ecosystem, likely they're all securities. Right? Why are they securities? They're controlled by uh, groups of developers. They're issued pursuant to ICOs, initial coin offerings. That makes them security. If uh, there's a pre-mine and there was a group of, of individuals that initially control the thing, it makes it security. If, um, you know, if anyone can exercise undue influence, it becomes a security. And technically, if you, know, if you look at the definition, it's when you're making an investment of money, uh, relying upon the efforts of others and expectation of profit, it becomes an investment contract, a security. Okay. The fundamental difference between Bitcoin and Ethereum is Ethereum's monetary policy changes every six months. Every few months it changes. There's a difficulty bomb in Ethereum that's been getting pushed back since 2016. They keep pushing it back. When it goes off, it will wipe out, obliterate a $50 billion Ethereum mining industry. Just wipe it out, completely change the protocol, flip everything to proof of stake. They keep putting it off. Okay, that sounds like a group of people exercising influence over the protocol. The thing you need to know about Bitcoin is on pizza day, May 22nd, 2010, Bitcoin is trading for a couple of pennies for the first time in 15 months or, or, or something like that. The protocol hadn't changed and has not changed. It, when it was a penny, the protocols were all the same. Today, they're the same exact protocol. There was a war 
fought over this, the block size war. And the block size war, all of the powerful holders and miners and exchanges wanted to change the protocol and double the block size. It would have changed all the economics of Bitcoin forever for the next thousand years. It would have screwed up the economics of the miners. It would have shifted the balance of power in favor of, of, of some holders versus others. That war was lost. The original Bitcoin protocol uh, continued on. And that means it's an unadulterated uh, protocol. And it's shown itself to be resistant to the influence of, of any group of people. That's what makes it property. Property is critical because pro if property makes Bitcoin, being property makes it the ethical foundation of the crypto economy. And by ethical foundation, I mean it's unethical for a public figure to endorse a security. If you're the mayor of a city, the governor of a state, if you're a politician, a congressman, a senator, a president of a nation, you can't endorse a security, nor can you make a security underpinning of the balance sheet of a public, uh, a public organization, right? It's like I couldn't say I really think that every citizen of Kansas City should buy Twitter stock because it's a better store of value. It's a conflict of interest. It's probably illegal. It right, probably violates all sorts of Foreign Corrupt Practices Acts, as well as all the ethics laws. And so this, this is a very bright line, property versus security. And as soon as you start to exercise influence over the protocol, it becomes a security. If you look at all the cryptos, you know, there might be a dozen that you could debate or property, a debate. Of the ones that you could debate or property, there's one that's dominant, which is Bitcoin. Hmm. There's 17,000 securities. As the SEC and the regulators move, there's going to be a massive shakeout. If they ever do clarify what the securities laws are, there's a whole set of disclosures and obligations. And then, and then uh, you're going to see uh, you know, the entire industry rationalize in a big way. So if you enjoyed this little short segment from the podcast that we did, here's another short segment to watch. Or if you want to see the entire podcast, Click over here. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.